Hey guys, today we are talking Perfume, The Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind. Perfume was originally published in 1985. And this was actually the book that you guys voted for me to read recently. I popped up a video with a few choices and Perfume was the winner. But thank you to everyone who voted on that video. I love hearing your guys' take on things and I will be definitely getting to the other books when I can. But I have to admit, after reading this, I am so glad that this was the book that won. I loved this thing. Now Perfume is definitely not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Uh, it is a very dark, disturbing, visceral story. I had previously seen the 2001 film with Ben Wishaw, so I knew basically what to expect. And having read the book now, uh, the book and film are quite similar. I did notice some differences, but I would have to re-watch the film now that I've read the book to really pick up on the differences. From my memory, the movie stayed relatively true. But I think there are some things that this book does that just can't be captured on film. So this book is set in 18th century France. Our protagonist, Jean-Baptiste Grenier, of course, pardon the pronunciation, I was probably completely off with that, but he is born into less than ideal circumstances. His mother was a fishmonger. She had had many pregnancies before, but all of them ended in either miscarriage or stillbirth. So when she gave birth to him at her actual fish stall, she simply gave birth to the child, cut him free of her and left him on the ground, assuming he would be dead. But of course, Jean Baptiste was meant to live. He let out a gigantic cry. He was discovered and his mother was sentenced to death for her actions. Now, Jean Baptiste was passed around to a couple of different Holmes as an infant. It was clear to everyone that came in contact with him that there was something different about him, something not quite right and something not to be trusted. Jean-Baptiste emits no odour. His skin, his hair, nothing emits any kind of odour. And whether people consciously recognise that or not, it makes them not trust him, even as a tiny infant. But along with the lack of scent that he emits, his actual sense of smell to himself to be able to smell other things is beyond any human comprehension. His nose, his olfactory senses are so incredibly heightened. As he grows, as he becomes more conscious of his surroundings, he's able to smell every little thing. He can smell a worm in a head of cabbage before it's been cut open. He can smell a person and know exactly what person that is when they're a few streets away. And every scent is much more complex to him than a regular nose would be able to interpret. Jean Baptiste also has not a lot of human understanding when it comes to uh, the human condition, the regular things that we all worry about or covet. He is unlike the rest of us in many different ways. To Jean Baptiste, scent is the be all end all of life. And until Jean-Baptiste is a young man, he thinks that all people are essentially despicable, partly because he's always been treated terribly, but also because all people to him smell rancid and disgusting. And men have a particular scent, women have a particular scent, each individual person has a particular scent, but none of them are good scents. Until he comes across a young lady who smells to him perfect. He follows her, he wants to remember every element of her scent, and he ends up strangling her to have more time to try and take in the memory of everything that she smells of. And thus begins the rest of the story. The descriptions in this book are beyond almost anything else I've ever read. I love the descriptions in this book, I love the language, it is just beautiful. Even when writing of truly disgusting and horrid, controversial subjects. The writing is just glorious. So much research must have gone into this book. All of the background information on actual perfumes. Um, John Baptiste ends up working for a perfumer and creating scents himself for many different reasons that I will not get into because it might spoil some of the plot a little. But I adored this book. John Baptiste isn't obviously isn't always um, the most sympathetic 
of characters. I did find something likeable about him and he was just endlessly interesting and fascinating and wonderful to read about. Such a unique character. I don't think I've ever really read anything that I can compare it to. Really, really beautiful book. And the ending is beyond anything else. If you've seen the movie and were um, shocked by the ending, which unless you've been spoiled, you will be shocked by the ending because it is it just comes out of nowhere. It's very similar in the book. They didn't completely change the ending in the movie and make it something much more ostentatious. It is actually in the book. And I think for some people that's kind of where uh, the narrative kind of jumps the shark and becomes something else and not something that people can take all too seriously. But I just, I love that unexpected smack of something different. Overall, I really, really enjoyed this book. I really, really highly recommend it. It is wonderful and bizarre and interesting and like nothing else I've really read. Definitely one to check out if you've been curious. So that's it guys. Those were my brief thoughts on Perfume, the story of a murderer. I will be definitely checking out other things from Patrick Susskind because while this narrative is unique to me and something that I really enjoyed reading about, his writing is what made this for me. So I definitely want to see what else he's done. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have read Perfume, I would love to know what you thought of it. And if you've read anything else by Patrick Susskind, I'd love to know your experiences with that as well. I hope you're all well and I will see you guys soon. Cat tail cameo.